You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Akome. So let's get started. Hey, hey guys, welcome back to the Side Hustle Pro Podcast. Today we are doing another update episode with one of our OG Side Hustle Pro alums, Miss Terry Idioma, who is going to update us all about the world of taking your first trade, her new program that she has. And I'm going to kind of allow you guys to be a fly on a wall as I workshop and work through some of my analysis paralysis as a student in her program. So for those of you who don't know Terry, Terry, can you just give us a little bit of background on your journey and how you began as a trader? Sure. Oh my gosh, this episode is going to be so fun. I'm trying yes. to channel my my inner therapist. Give it to us. <laughs> give it to me. Therapist. I need it. I need it. <laughs> um, but for everybody who doesn't know me, my name is Terry Gioma and I quit my job as an assistant principal to travel all over the world. And I afforded it by trading stocks. I went to Thailand, Australia, Vietnam, Israel, everywhere. And I was just trading stocks to afford it. And of course, as I was traveling, people started asking me to teach them how to trade. Mm. So now I have a class, Trade and Travel, and we teach people how do you trade for income or to just pay for that thing that you've been wanting, whether that's paying off debt or buying something for your daycare if you're a new mom or taking care of your um, new house. I have a student who wanted to renovate her kitchen. She did that with trading stocks. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that and make income and regular money from trading stocks? I definitely relate to that daycare piece. I purchased your program back when I was a few months postpartum and I was gung ho, like I'm going to do this, obviously inspired by not only your story, but, you know, some of your student testimonials. But then I kind of just got stuck. And I want to talk about like, let's break down what trading even is for a second, because there's these two minds that exist within me. And I'm sure a lot of people, which is your mind that's been told to invest, invest, invest and kind of like buy and then hold. And then there's trading. So what's the difference between an investing mindset and then the trading that you do? Yes. So long term investors, they are putting money into their stock portfolio and they're just leaving it until retirement. So they're not having to touch it. They're kind of just letting it go. The Good and bad part about it is on the good side, it doesn't take a lot of time. They don't have to think about it much because they're not going to touch it for 20, 30 years. So the assumption is if it falls, then that's okay. It'll come back up over time and you just let it go. The downside of that, though, is you don't have much control because like right now, the stock market's been falling. If you have a long term portfolio, (laughs) Your money's just coming down and there's really nothing you can do about it. So you feel a little helpless, like, okay, well, I just hope the market comes back up because I don't know. Um, Also, you can't use the money right away. So on days where it is doing well, you can't take it out and use it because you're trying to let it sit for the long run. Right. On the flip side, the shorter term investing is for those that need money right now. So you're trying to make a percentage of the amount of money in your account on a regular basis. So let's say you have ten thousand dollars in your savings account. As a trader, you're going to invest in stocks in order to try to make I usually go for like one percent and try to to try to make one percent return on that cash. When it comes to that, when you say 1%, are you trying to do that daily? Like, is that what you encourage us to aim for daily? Great question. So this is where, and I think maybe this is where the analysis paralysis comes in. It's really up to each person. Mm. So me, I try to average 1% on a daily basis. And now that I don't need the money as much, I try to do, okay, let me average 5% a week. But for some people, you don't need it that often. And maybe you're not even trying to make that much money of a return. So you may do 1% every quarter. If you do it eight times a year, you've already beat the average because the average for the overall market is eight to 10 percent return. So if you just make one percent return eight times during the year, well, now you're at the average. Do it more than 10 times. Now you've beat the average. So it's really up to each person. 
And when you say trading, like, do you use trading and short selling interchangeably? Is it the same thing? Great question. So short selling is making money as the market goes down, but it's a type of trading. Oh, okay. So trading is just active investing. Anything less than a year of holding a stock is trading. Okay. So whether that's making money on the way up or the way down, you're still trading as long as it's less than a year. And, okay. So this up and down thing. All right. Talk to your girl. Talk to your girl. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's no for real let's talk in as simple terms as possible um because i think this is part of the intimidation you're not saying complex things you're just saying things that um maybe people don't say every day like this is not terminology we use every day so when you say you know bias things go up or bias they go down talk to us about what each of those terms means and then what it looks like to buy when it is going up and to buy when it's going down Sure. So I'll give you guys real time examples because like I'm yeah. I'm trading every day. Yeah. So <laughs> um, real time example, I, I really love Adobe stock mm-hmm. and everything has been kind of coming down lately. But Adobe has these big jumps where it'll go up 15, 16 dollars yeah. in a day. Meaning the value so of the when stock. I, in the value of the stock, okay. yes. So when I say um, buy low and then sell high, that might mean that I got into Adobe at five hundred and eight dollars, and then when it moved up ten bucks to five hundred and eighteen dollars, I sold, mm-hmm. and I get to keep that difference, that ten dollars per share. However many shares I have, I get to keep that difference. So that's buying low, selling high. So that's on the way up. Okay, that's called going long. Mm-hmm. So now on the flip side, though. Everything's been falling. Today, Tesla had their earnings and they fell a hundred bucks in a day. So you could also sell first, sell high, Mm -hmm. and then buy it back low. So real time numbers. Let's say that before yesterday, Tesla was at $900. After earnings, it fell a hundred dollars to 800, right? So yesterday it was at 900, today it was at 800. So one way that you can make money, and this is short selling, I could have sold it at $900. So I sold it at 900, I bring in $900 of cash. Then when it falls to 800, I go buy it back at $800. So just imagine I was like holding the $900. I give you 800, well now I got Tesla stock for 800, but I still have $100 left over from selling it earlier. That's short selling. You sell it high and then you buy it back low. That's how people make money on the way down. Okay. So and that short selling. Which which do you prefer or recommend? I know you're not here to give us investing or stock advice or, or, or you know, trading advice per se. Like, you know, that's like that gets into legal territory. But um, yeah, what do you prefer? I'll tell you the truth. You make more money faster short selling. Mm-hmm. Because whenever things fall, they fall super fast. Like just imagine I think it was Amazon stock. It fell almost $1,000 in one week. It took it a whole year and a half to go up $1,000. Like the last time right now, it's around $2,700, actually around $2,800. The last time it was at these prices was July of 2020. Wow. So it took a year and a half for it to get up to $3,700, but it took a week for it to fall. (laughs) So you can make money super fast short selling, but I will tell you the truth, I get so scared as a short seller. Like I have to actually like mentally force myself like Terry, this is what you need to do right now. (laughs) The stock is falling, go with it. After all these years. I get scared, I know. I get scared because I think naturally I'm an optimistic person. Mm -hmm. So I'm always hoping that the market is gonna go up. Yeah. Like, that's just like a natural instinct. And I think for a lot of traders, that's the natural instinct. Like, you're hopefully optimistic. So you're like, oh, it'll go good tomorrow. (laughs) So you have to kind of go against that mindset Mm -hmm. when you're short selling. And then also, I've been burned before. Mm -hmm. So in Tesla, okay, so do you remember when there was the GameStop and the AMC and they just started surging up? And they called it a short squeeze. Mm -hmm. The reason why it was going up high was because it was a short squeeze. What happened was there was a lot of people short selling, expecting the stock to go down, but it didn't go down. It went up. So they had to buy it higher than they had sold it for. Um, I know this is way too technical, but the problem is I had done that before and gotten hurt Mm -hmm. short selling. So now when I'm doing it again, I have to get over my fear like, 
look, last time you got hurt, but this okay. Yeah. Do it because you know this is the right thing to do. And you can make money on the way down. So I have been doing that. Um, today I short sold and I did well. So it's really just, you got to get over your own mind yeah. sometimes. And and so I'm glad that you talked about that though. I mean, it's encouraging to know that even years in at this stage, you too still have to overcome like that mental hurdle sometimes. And maybe for us, it's not short selling. Maybe for us, it's just making that first trade. Um, based on what you've seen and observed with your students, what is stopping most people from doing that first trade, from really jumping into the course? There's a couple things stopping people from from making their first trade. One is a lot of people in my course, I will say, are A personalities. <laughs> and they like to be good and perfect at everything they do. Yeah. So I think a little bit is that perfectionism. Yes. Because they don't feel like they know everything, then they won't even try. Yeah. They won't even start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but trading is one of those things where, baby girl, you're not going to know everything. Like, I, I equate it to almost having kids. Yeah. Like, Every and I, I don't have kids, so I, I'm imagining. Yeah. But every child is different. No matter how much instruction or advice you get, you're not gonna know how to do it until you actually have to raise a that child. That is accurate. <laughs> so you okay, that good. Accurate. That's what I heard. <laughs> so because of that, like the market is a living, breathing, moving thing. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you as much as I can. Yeah. And that's why it's still good to get education because mm -hmm. at least you're more prepared and you can make higher probability trades. Yeah. But the only way to learn is to do it. So I think that's one thing. You got to get over the perfectionism. You got to get over the idea of I don't know enough. Yes. That's the first part. The second thing that stops people is this idea of losing. Mm. And nobody wants to lose their money nope. and i think what happens especially like recently in this this market the market's been kind of consistently going down the last two months yep. whether you're a long-term investor or a short-term investor you're probably hurting a little bit because companies that are great healthy beautiful companies are still losing value and you're and it doesn't even make sense like the earnings are coming out they're saying that they did good and the stock still falls mm -hmm. and sometimes when the market just doesn't make sense everybody gets hurt and i think that a little bit of of the fear is, well, I don't want to get hurt. Yeah. So I'm just not going to start at all. Yeah. But like that, that's risking everything. Like just living your life is risky. Yeah. So you got to try it. Like even if there's a risk of getting hurt, that's why we have risk management. That's why we limit our losses. That's why you could even practice in the simulator. But yes, there's always going to be a risk of getting hurt. But the reward is going to be so much better mm -hmm. than your loss. I, I mean, when you put it in that perspective, like it makes a lot of sense. Um, even as someone who has side hustled and turned a side hustle into full time entrepreneurship, I know, you know, I talk about this, like I know that you there's nothing that's going to give you the information and the experience like actually doing. But still, it's human instinct. Like as soon as you start something new to feel like, OK, let me just read up on it. Let me just um, take, you know, a few courses, but not act on the course info yet. Let me take another one. Um, let me do act. Let me watch some more YouTube videos and then not actually do. So when you put it into that perspective, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So, OK, I'm ready to do. I opened up Good. Teachable again. I started looking through everything. And I want to know more about um, how do I actually get started? So you have, you know, that module you get into, like actually opening your brokerage account. Okay, boom, done that. Like, how do you actually get started? <laughs> yeah. You know what? And be because you're a student, and I know everybody listening is not a student, mm -hmm. but I'm going to talk to you from the student perspective yeah. because I feel like it'd be really helpful. Mm -hmm. I think in my course, there's also this analysis paralysis because people don't finish the course. That's and they have it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, yeah, that's with everything. Because you haven't taken the time out to actually plan it, you don't finish. And then because you don't finish, you just kind of leave it on the side. And a year later, you're like, oh, I was finna do this. And I had it. <laughs> But you can always get back up, guys. Let me be a lesson. You can. you can. We fall down, but we get back yes. up. Right? Like, 
So first step is I need you to make a plan mm-hmm. for when you're actually going to do the lessons. Yes. And and I want you to be creative. Like it could be as I go on a walk with my kid, I'm going to put it on my cell phone and I'm going to listen to the course. Mm-hmm. Or as I go exercise, I have one friend every morning when he's on the treadmill, he puts on the course and he listens to another hour. Mm-hmm. So just like first, that's the first thing to get started. How am I going to actually finish the curriculum and actually commit and discipline myself? Yeah. But that's with even like New Year's resolutions. I feel like we make all these plans and then don't do them <laughs> because we don't make an actual yeah. like yeah. disciplined plan. I was just talking about so, that. Like you have to, even when you do a vision board, like I've done one again this year. I haven't done it in years, but it just is so helpful to see visually. But then I have to actually, and I have taken those pictures and turned it into written action items with, you know, more benchmarks and things like that. So it actually gets done. And it's not just like this thing that I think I'm going to manifest by looking at the picture. Right. So that's step one, getting your plan together. And then two, when you say like, how do I actually get started? I definitely think trading first in a simulator is super important. And I think, first of all, just pressing the buttons is important. I have one student like she had she showed me her notebook of notes. She has so many notes, (laughs) beautiful drawings, different colors, just gorgeous notes and had never taken a train. (laughs) And I was like, what is going on right now? And I know she probably was like, I'm going to make sure I need to buy multicolored pens to do my trade and travel course. (laughs) Like that was part of the action for her. Like I need to pay her to just sell her notes. Like you, you're not going to trade. You just sell your notes. That's what, But I think that's the next thing. Just Mm -hmm. get in there and press some buttons Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to go right. It doesn't have to go wrong. Like take away the expectation that my first time is going to be amazing. Like let's just put in the expectation that you're going to fail the first time. Like take the burden off. I'm, I'm about to fail. Let's see how bad I can fail today. And just press the buttons, let it run, see how the numbers go and get that first anxiety out. I think that's the next step. Go into your simulator, press the buttons, see the numbers go, and then press to sell. That's the next step after that. After you get into it, you need to sell it. Mm -hmm. And like that's where you become a trader versus an investor. An investor just presses in and then they let it go. But a trader, we have to also sell. So that's the next step. Press sell. Yeah. And, and see what that feels like, get that out the way, do that four or five times, and then you can come back and be like, okay, now I'm gonna actually try to do it for real. Yeah. So guys, let's face it. The work world looks so much different than it ever has. Whether you're in person, remote, or in a closet like me, <laughs> or somewhere in between, taking care of your team couldn't be more important. That's where Gusto comes in. Gusto's modern HR platform makes it easy to hire, pay, manage, and support your employees all in one system of record. That means no more jumping between applications and no more jumping through hoops. Your payroll, your benefits, your hiring and onboarding, team management tools, and so much more are all there for you in one convenient place. On top of that, Gusto provides actionable insights to inform decisions around workforce costing, competitive compensation, and employee engagement. So all those tough decisions you make each day just got a whole lot easier. And the best part? Listeners of Side Hustle Pro get three months of Gusto for free at gusto.com slash SHP. That's right. If you're ready to experience a new bar for HR, get three months free at gusto.com slash SHP. Gusto.com SHP. Now, I... It's funny that you say that because um, I love that. I love thinking of it as like, all right, let me just get all just all these imaginations out of my head about like the first time I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a thousand like (laughs) let me just expect that it's not going to be good and take that off the table right away. So then then level set. 
And that helps you move forward for sure. Yes. Um, do you think that for people who have experience and have been investing, you know, like most people sign up for their 401k, set your distribution and never think about it again, you know, set, you know, choose um, your funds or whatever. Do you think that that kind of behavior um, is so ingrained in us that we're used to kind of just set it and forget it? And like having to get back into the rhythm of looking constantly is it's a behavior shift. It definitely is a behavior shift. But you know what I think is more ingrained in us Mm -hmm. to make excuses of all the reasons why we can't do something. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's ingrained in us because (laughs) because I, I talked to someone earlier today and he was telling me about how he thinks he would be a great trader. Uh-huh. He's like, I know I can do it. I was an engineer. I, I had the mindset. I know I can do it, but I just don't know if I'm going to have the time. Mm. And I feel like that little piece that but I yeah. that's ingrained in us to make every excuse of why it's not going to work for us. Mm. And when you come into any kind of situation with all the excuses of why it's not going to work, yeah. then it's not going to work. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. now we got to like switch our mind to say, you know what? These are all the reasons why trading will work for me. It will work for me because I do have a little extra time after I get off of work or it will work for me because I'm going to be a swing trader. I don't have to look at it all the time, but once a quarter, I'll make a nice trade. It will work for me because all I really want is $100 to go get a massage and I have more than enough to make $100, right? Like, I think that's where we got to change our mindset. You are so right about that. You are so right about that, that, that there's an ingrain. It's not only like, yeah, it's like being trained to make excuses. But the saddest part about that is that means there's like some ingrained um, behavior where we're trained to doubt ourselves and we're trained to doubt our capabilities. And why should that be our default? You know, I'm very much on living in the why not me category of life in this season of life very much so so that's why you know i'm, I'm gonna keep getting back up even if i'm like all right i bought this course i i really want to do this i haven't done it yet i'm going to keep getting back up because i'm like hashtag why not me i know i can do it i believe i can and i'm gonna make the time you know It's easy to say, I just don't know where I'm going to find the time. I don't have the time. Okay, I'm going to make that time. And thank you for that tip about the phone because, yeah, I haven't put Teachable on my phone. And that would absolutely help me throughout the day because I just pop my ear pods in while my son is, you know, doing his independent play and get some knowledge going while I'm just doing my thing around the house. Absolutely. Yeah, it works on the phone just as well as on the computer. Okay. Now, um, Mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about risk management when it comes to this. Um, So you mentioned the simulator. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that is and how it helps us with calculating risk, how it helps us with, um, yeah, just kind of testing out before we go and make our first trade? Yes. So a simulator is practicing with paper money. But it works just like the regular brokerage account, the regular stock market. You will feel like it's the same thing. And it really depends which simulator you're using. I actually just found out a new one for the five day challenge, like where I'm teaching people how to take their first trade. We're using one called TradingView. TradingView. So if people want to check that one out, Mm TradingView.com, they let you pay per trade. Okay. Mm hmm. So it's a little it's a little complex. Yeah. I won't lie. It's it's something that you do need someone to walk you through a little bit, but it has so many cool tools. So it's one of those things where if you're going to paper trade and you're looking for a nice simulator, that's a good one. Okay. But if you want something more simple, Rapunzel app, mm. it's called R-A-P-U-N-Z-L. Okay. Uh, Rapunzel is good. You can paper trade with $10,000. I know um, TD Ameritrade has one called think or swim they have a paper trade Mm -hmm. application so paper trading is just you do the same steps like in our our trade and travel class we have seven steps we take every time we take a trade you do those same things but you practice with paper money Mm -hmm. and i want people to get good like i encourage them try to have 10 consistent paper trades before you go to your real money Mm. That way you can see like, what's my track record? What's my win rate? How many times do I I lose? And when I do lose, is it small or is it big? And you can really get those things under control before you go to your real money. Okay. So before we Mm -hmm. get a little bit more into like the challenge and how to join and all of that, um, share with us like, 
how do you think that people really can use trading as a side hustle? Like, what's the best way to approach it if you want to make this a side hustle? I mean, I think it can really be one of the best side hustles. You know, it doesn't require any overhead and employees and, <laughs> you know, all this other stuff. So um, how can people actually approach this and create um, a side hustle for themselves through trading? Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to approach this from the idea of someone who's already been trading a little bit, mm-hmm. but not finding success yet. Okay. Because I think that person is really trying to figure out, like, can I really do this? Yeah. Like, can I really do this as a side hustle? Mm-hmm. And the answer is yes. But here are the things that you have to be good at to, to really make this a side hustle. One, the same way that if you had a part time job, you would have to make time to go to it every week. You're going to have to set time aside to actually study the charts. So if you were driving Uber or doing um, delivery, you would have, okay. these are my hours where I'm going to be doing those things. Or even if you did a side hustle as I mean, they're all kind of things, but you have to set aside time, set aside time to watch financial news. You do need to be up to date on financial news if you're going to be a trader. You also need to look at the stock news for your stocks. You don't have to trade a lot of them. I think that's also a misconception. If you don't have a lot of time, pick one stock that you like, whether that's I'm just going to trade Apple or I'm just going to trade Tesla or I'm just going to trade Amazon. You can just pick one. You don't have to know everything about every stock in the world. Just pick a couple that you're really good at mm-hmm. and hone in on those. And then you're going to want to know what's up, what's going on with that stock. And so that's one. You're going to really need to spend some time each week actually looking at the market. Okay. If you decide that you don't want to do that, then it's going to be hard to have this as the side hustle. OK, so that's one thing. Two, you do need to know how to make money on the way up and down because the market is going to go both directions. If you only know how to make money on the way up, which is the first half of trade and travel. So half of my students only know how to make money on the way up. What that does is it just means that there's going to be times where you can't trade. Mm -hmm. So the last few weeks where the market's been falling, those students have had to sit on the side. And that's okay because they're getting some really good deals. Stocks are just coming on clearance. And they're like, ooh, (laughs) this is my my shopping list. And I I like that one. But at the same time, during those weeks, because they don't know how to make money when the market is falling, they're not going to make money those three weeks. So just know that if you only know how to make money on the way up, it's not going to be as consistent a side hustle because depending on what the market is doing, you may have to be patient. Yeah. But if you know how to make money up and down, then you can. You just have more opportunities. When the market's falling, you can make money. When the market's going up, you can make money. Right? Yeah. So those are some things that you will have to know how to do or just have all the tools available for you to make it a consistent side hustle. Mm. I mean, those are the facts. Um, I like that (laughs) that tip of focusing on a few stocks at a time or one stock at a time. Does that mean like you're essentially going to be buying and selling your your stock over and over again or just shares of it, right? You're going to invest and and be able to grow out more shares as you go, but then be able to capitalize on if it's up or down. It does. It means that for your side hustle, it might get a little boring at times because you're just looking at one stock. (laughs) Like, Like I literally could make my goal just trading Adobe Mm. or just trading Amazon. Uh, It would get, like I said, it would get kind of boring, but also it would take a lot less time because you know what that company is going to do. Mm -hmm. If they move a little bit, you make your goal, then you're done for the day. And it might even be you're done for the week because you may make your goal in one trade and then you're finished the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it means you're sometimes kind of bored, but that means you know that stock like the back of your yeah. hand. And and I do want to also talk about this idea of having a goal. Mm-hmm. As a trader, you do need a concrete goal. Okay. It just is more it just helps you be more consistent. So, one of my students, her goal is I want to make $100 each month yeah. so I can get a massage. If she makes that $100 on day 2 of the month, She's good. She doesn't have to look at it the rest of the month. And that gives you like a solid goal and also a solid boundary. Like, I'm not going to look at this every day and over trade and try to be in and out of this and and working my feelings. No, I hit my hundred dollars. I'm going to the massage place. I'm good. 
So that's also important too. As a side hustle, think through what is my goal? What is the target I'm trying to go for? And make it reasonable. Yeah. The lower it is, the easier it is to achieve. So those things will be helpful. And, you know, it's also a, a way to get into it without feeling overwhelmed because that's the thing about side hustling. Side hustling has to start small. Side hustling has to be something that you're doing on the side while you're working a full-time job. So obviously you're busy. You have so much on your mind. So this idea of um, focusing on one or two stocks at a time, to me, helps it be manageable and it helps it. It helps me to feel like, oh, I'm going to get really good at this whole idea, not this whole idea, but the practice of monitoring a stock and being able to assess what's going to happen. Um, of course, you can't predict the future, but really being good at uh, assessing the market so that when I do have bandwidth to take on more, I can do that. Um, so I really love that tip. And you know what? People also need to know that this is a skill that they can turn on and off. Like they don't have to do it all year. Okay. If you are busy, yeah. then don't trade. Yeah. But then on other times where you have more time, then you can trade. I think that too gets people a little scared. Mm -hmm. They feel like, well, once I know how to do this, I got to do it every day. No, you don't. Right. I got to spend like, four hours. I got to, you know. No, the the biggest time that people make mistakes is when they're trying to trade stocks and they're super busy at work or somewhere else because you can't pay attention to both no, things. No. So during those times, just let it go. Okay. Even for me, like on t certain days where I'm traveling and I'm at the airport all day and I'm in the plane, like sometimes I can look at it, but other times I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just take a break for a little bit yeah. and come back. And, and that's okay too. So I just wanna, I feel like this time I have to give people permission, <laughs> yes. although I don't yeah. really, but sometimes people, especially traders, like they get so in their head sometimes that they like make it so tough. It's like, yeah. look, I give you permission to not trade. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it really is. Thank you, thank you for that permission. Um, what I also like about it is, is it's really frustrating to watch your stocks just going down and you feel like, oh man, like if I sell, then, you know, I'm missing out and it's going to go back up and, and, and you, but you, it's just going down, down, down. So this almost, it gives you this empowering feeling like, oh, I'm going to work this in my favor. You know, that, that's the mode I want to get into. Um, I feel more empowered in control, in control by being yeah. able to do that. So Tell us a little bit more now. Let's talk about yourfirsttrade.com. And by the way, guys, if you haven't, you can join this challenge. It's a five-day challenge, right? Over yes. at sidehustlepro.co slash first trade. And tell us more awesome. about the challenge, um, what it entails, why you decided to start it. So this challenge actually for is for people just like you that were excited to get investing, yeah. like get or become a trader, but were scared. Cause I get so many messages in my DM like, Terry, I'm just nervous, yeah. I'm terrified. I really wanna do it, but I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like, can you help me? I don't know anything, I'm super novice. So this is for them. I'm actually gonna teach five days straight just to help people take that first trade. Okay. And the, the other part about it too is when I was younger, I actually wanted to invest in Google and Google was $83 a share at the time. Now it's almost $3,000. Yeah. Yes. And I remember going to my teachers, going to my granny, and nobody knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. So this also is for them. Yeah. This is for either the person who wants to get invested and nobody knows how to help them, or the person who is a grandmother or is in a place of influence like teachers, mm -hmm. and somebody is gonna come to you one day and ask for your help. At least you'll know how to do it, right? And we're gonna start with something super simple. We're gonna learn how to invest in the overall market mm -hmm. because last year the S&P 500 was up 26.9%. So if you had just invested in the overall market, you would be up 20 more than 20%, which is huge. Yeah. So I'm gonna teach people, well, how do you do that? How do you get invested in the overall market? And that includes like the first day we're showing how to open accounts. The second day we're looking at what companies are even in the overall market. Yeah. When we say Dow or S&P 500, what's in there? Yes. Did you know that the Dow is only 30 companies? 
<laughs> people, people talk about the Dow Jones yeah. all the time and they're like, it was up 500 points. It was down. And you you don't realize yeah. they're just talking about 30 companies yeah. that they chose to, to dictate what's happening mm-hmm. in the overall market. Yeah. So we'll look at that, like what's in those indexes. And then to invest in those indexes, the next day we'll look at an ETF, an exchange traded fund, Mm -hmm. because that's the way it's treated like a stock, but it's many companies together. That's how you'll actually get invested in the index. So we'll look at that and then I'll show you, okay, guys, now that we know how to do it, this is how you place a trade. This is how you actually get a share. And then the next day, because we're traders, we're going to learn how to sell the share. Mm -hmm. So this is how you would be able to take your profit. Love it. And I'm, I'm just so excited because one, the timing of all this, like the market has come down and like, it's just anytime is a good time to get invested in the overall market. But it so makes it accessible. Um, you know, some stocks yes. that we couldn't have gotten before, perhaps. And, you know, one of the things I love about the challenge as well, Terry, like, I feel that there is, for some people, this pride thing where they don't want to admit that they don't know as much as the stock market as they should. They, they quote unquote should. Like, they feel like, oh, I'm smart. I'm this age. I'm that age. I don't want anyone to know that, you know, I don't want to look like I don't know what, all this stuff or whatever. And this is one of those times where like, we just need to let go of ego and we just need to learn what we need to learn. Like, and, and I want to emphasize that like, no one is um, smarter than you or better than you. If they're trading or they're making money, all they did was take the time to learn. That's it. So, you know, we're never too old to start learning new things. And this is one of those times, like it's the beginning of the year. I mean, you could do this at any time. I know you'll be listening to this episode all times of the year. Um, All you got to do is take that first step. Oh, the difference yep. between Take your first trade. That first trade. <laughs> yep. First trade.com or side hustle pro.co first yes, trade. Yes. Um, you know, that that's my special link. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Yes, um, take that one. Go I would be y'all. in the challenge, you guys, because like I said, I have been in that analysis paralysis zone and I'm ready to step out of that. But I really do enjoy um, you know, learning from Terry. Like I really do enjoy like being able to get on live with her and her walk through it again and be able to ask her questions in the comment section and all of that. So this is a really timely moment for me that, you know, she's doing the challenge. So I want us all to, you know, use this time to learn something new. The challenge is completely free. Oh, Um, it's not. It's actually not free. Sorry. There's a small fee. (laughs) It's like $55. It's super. It's super cheap. (laughs) Come on. It's for what you're getting and what you'll be able to do. So, you know, don't let the entrance fee be a deterrent because this is something where you're going to be learning so much. I mean, this is a lifelong skill. I have talked to so many women older than me who have a lot of money who are still kind of afraid to invest in the overall market. And, you know, I want to get better at this so I can help other people get over that fear. Not like I want to coach them myself, but I just want to be able to share my experience and say, oh no, this is what that means. This is who's in the Dow. And, you know, like this is how you invest and this is how your money would grow. Like even when all these things are, are falling, like here's how you can calculate risk. Here's how you can put, at least put a little bit here. So, you know, that can grow year over year by roughly this percentage so that we're not missing out on money. That's the thing that hurts my heart the most like especially for black women seeing us miss out on having our money grow um i'm done with that i'm ready to do something about that and so this is one of the ways um side hustle pro is leveling up this year i'm taking y'all along for the ride with me yes. terry is helping us terry is you know part a of this plan <laughs> so i, love it. I, love I it. Um, encourage you all to to join this challenge So now, before we go, are there any final words you want to just share with everyone? You know, things, words of encouragement, support to help people who have this interest and, you know, are listening to this podcast and they want to take that next step. So uh, what words of wisdom can you share with them? Yeah. One thing that keeps sticking with me is the idea you gave of like this fear of missing out. You were like, man, it's going down and I don't know, like, am I am I getting in? I should be in like you got to take the first step. Yeah. The way to get over fear of missing out is to just get in and try. And then let us teach you how to 
how to protect your risk. Let us teach you how to take some reward. But the first thing is like, you just got to get started. You just got to start. And with that, you guys, there you have it. Um, one more time to join the challenge, go over to sidehustlepro.co slash first trade. I will link it in the show notes. Someone put that in the comments for me over on IG. And uh, yeah. Terry, thank you so much for joining us in the guest chair. Where can people connect with you after this interview? Yeah, everywhere at Trade and Travel. On YouTube, Trade and Travel. On Instagram, Trade and Travel. It's all spelled out. And then we also have like free webinars and things on our website, tradeandtravel.com. All right, guys. So good to chat with you, Cherry. And with that, I will talk to you guys next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six bullet Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon. Thank you.